Kevin Delaney here. I want to talk to you today about flexibility and specifically flexibility of mind, flexibility of consciousness, flexibility of awareness, and to talk about the very crucial issue here of state, mental emotional state, and the importance of being flexible when it comes to emotional and mental state. Most people I'm sorry to say, are rather limited in this regard. Most people don't have a wide range of mental emotional states that they can experience. They don't have a, a very highly developed repertoire of mental emotional states, and they don't have a lot of control over their mental emotional state in any given moment. I would estimate the average person has at most about four or five mental emotional states that they experience on a regular basis. Anybody can go to the dentist and be under anesthesia and be in a completely different type of state of mind, but on a regular basis, day to day, uh, week to week, month to month, most people, I would estimate at most, have about four or five different states of mind that they experience regularly. And as a result of that, most people don't have a whole lot of range in terms of the mode in which they're in in any given moment at any given time. I talk about mood, which is kind of the most basic issue, state, which often encompasses mood, but it involves also your way of thinking, the direction in which your mind is moving. and. Uh, then mode, of course, encompasses state as well, um, but it has to do also with what you're doing in your life. So it, it has to do with how you're thinking and feeling, but also then what you're actually doing. For example, most people basically have two modes, more or less. A lot of people, I, I, we all know people like this, it's like work mode and then vacation mode, basically. So either they're in work mode or they're in vacation mode, and vacation doesn't mean that they're going on vacation somewhere. It's like, okay, it's Friday, it's time for the weekend, don't bother me. And uh, basically, like, I just want to veg out now, or I'm done with the work day, and it's time to go home now, just veg out. And uh, that's basically how they live their lives, you know, basically between those two modes, work mode and, and vacation mode, or veg out mode. And what we want to do as human beings is we want to develop ourselves internally as much as possible. We want to be highly developed human beings. We want to be highly developed in terms of our, our thinking, in terms of our feeling. We want to be highly aesthetically developed. This is what it means to be a highly aesthetically developed human being. It means that you have a wide range of options in any given moment and also that you have the ability to choose, to a large extent at least, what mode you're going to be in, what state you're going to be in, what kind of mood you're going to be in. Many, many people are very passive in this regard, extremely passive. Uh, they can be triggered very easily uh, from one state into another into another. We all know people who, you know, there's almost like a, a magic word you can say. Sometimes it is actually a single word that triggers a person and causes them to go from one state into another state. Sometimes it's somebody's name. You mention a person's name and instantly the person goes, what? How dare you mention that name around me? I, uh, you know, if I ever get my hands on that bastard, I'm going to kill him. Good example of this, maybe a bit of a, an exaggeration, uh, but nonetheless, if, if you remember the movie Back to the Future 2, uh, Marty McFly had this trigger word and when that word was chicken, if somebody called him chicken, like, you know, you're chicken, he instantly went into this rage. And it was like, I have to fight this person, no matter who they were. It could have been Mike Tyson in his prime. He would have, ah, I'm going to fight you. Nobody calls me chicken. Uh, which was a pretty, pretty uh, lame uh, plot device, I thought, especially because it never came up at all in the first movie. It's obvious they were making it up as they went along. But in any event, that's a good example there of, of a person who has a very, very poor state control. They're, they're not really in charge of their own mental emotional state. And this is what we want as much as possible. We want to be highly, highly developed people in this regard. And we want to uh, be able to uh, experience uh, a wide range of mental emotional states. Of course, we want to experience good, positive, uh, empowering 
mental emotional states as much as possible. We, we want to have a wide, a wide repertoire of mental emotional states and we want them all to be basically good, to be productive. Um, and the way to do this is first of all to get very, very interested in the whole issue of state. Uh, to get, to, to make yourself very aware of the issue of state, to ask yourself not at every moment, you can't do it at every moment, but at various times you know, throughout your day, what kind of state am I in? And am I in the kind of mental emotional state that I really want to be in? Is this, is this state that I'm in right now conducive to what I want to accomplish in my life? Uh, get very interested in states. Uh, become very uh, interested in the idea of changing your state, altering your state, discovering new states. Um, I remember when I really started to become aware of the issue of state and uh, just almost like just the ability to to almost enter a different world. You, you, again, mental emotional state has to do with how you're feeling. It also has to do with how you're thinking, your thought patterns. And when you're in a different kind of state, the world seems different. Your life seems different. You actually, in a certain sense, become a different person. And uh, it can be a very, very exciting thing to explore different states of mind um, and then along with that come to discover new aspects of yourself, new powers that you have, new abilities and uh, it also gives you, I think it helps your self-esteem very much because you feel much more in control of your mind and of your consciousness. As I said before, you know, you're not uh, moved by the wind. Something happens, something you know happens in the environment it doesn't have that same ability to just trigger you into that other state. So these are some issues I'll be talking more about. Uh, ultimately, it comes down to the issue of aesthetics. Aesthetics now from a psychological standpoint. If we were talking about, talking about aesthetics from a philosophic standpoint, that has to do with art and the creation of art and principles pertaining to uh, works of art and the evaluation of art and whatnot. But if we're to talk about aesthetics from a psychological standpoint, that now has to do with internal experience. Aesthetics is the science of internal experience. And that's a very, very exciting field and something I, I have a lot more to say about and I will in the future. So if you have any thoughts on this, feel free to leave a comment. I will talk to you later.